Sales 101 says that you have to do networking. And so whether you're shy and introverted like me, or whether you're the biggest people person in the world, here are eight simple tips that you can implement to take your networking to the next level. Most of us look at networking as the hunt. Going out there and giving out cards and meeting as many people as possible. Networking is about not only meeting more people, but developing deeper relationships with them so that way when they have a need, or when something comes up, or they need some help, they think of you. So whether you're introverted or shy, or your networking just isn't working for you, here are eight tips that work for me, and they will work for you too. Okay, let's go. Tip number one, you gotta get excited you're heading to the event, how do you feel? Do you have stress? Are you anxious? Because if you're not excited, if you're not looking forward to it, if you don't see the challenge or the game or the fun that's about to happen, you're gonna carry all of that energy into the room with you and no one's gonna wanna talk to you, right? You're gonna just freak yourself out. You gotta get yourself into a place where you convince yourself that this is about to be fun, that you're excited to be here, whether you wanna be here or not, that you're about to meet new people and make new friends, because that's what it's actually about. Psych yourself out, do whatever you need to do to make sure that when you walk through the doors, you've convinced yourself you're about to have some fun. Tip number two, always have a goal for the event. If your goal is as simple as showing up and staying for the whole event, because typically you bounce early, that's a fine goal. If your goal is to meet three people and have three conversations where you not only learn about them, but you actually share a little bit about yourself, that's a great goal. You have to have a goal clearly set in your mind that you challenge yourself to actually hitting that goal. Number three, talk to people who aren't talking to people. Guess what? You're not talking to anyone. They're not talking to anyone. You go over there and you make the first move, they will be so appreciative that someone saved them from their loneliness. And you don't have to be a crazy extrovert to do this. I literally look for someone who's not engaging in a conversation and I just sidle up next to them and I go, hey, I'm Mark. I'm not talking to anyone either. Listen, it's not the savviest, most engaging way to start a conversation. I'm telling you, it breaks the ice, it works every single time, and then once you have that conversation, you're gonna feel better. You're gonna get the ball rolling. It will be easier for you to engage in the conversations with other people. Tip number four, attend events where you can meet the same people over and over again. This is really big for me actually, because if you attend a lot of networking events and you expect the first time you meet someone or the second time you see them, that they're gonna care about you, remember you, know anything about you, you are sorely mistaken. So what you have to do is you have to find a community where you can go to the event over and over and over again, say every few weeks or every month, and it's the same people, rather than go to 100 different events and meet 100 different groups of people. You'll form deeper relationships, you'll have a better opportunity to connect with them, because you gotta meet the, the group or the community six, eight, 10, 12 times before they'll even remember you or introduce you to other people or when the need comes up they'll even think of you and you'll actually have a lot more fun attending the events because you feel more comfortable and you're starting to build a community around you tip number five bring people with you there is no rule against bringing people with you so think about this you can invite clients or past clients or even prospects to the networking event with you you have the chance after the event to connect and talk and not only that, if you get there and you have no idea how this event is gonna go and who you're gonna speak to, you can spend the entire event talking to them. What's wrong with that? And so if you are not good at networking or nervous, you can always take advantage of bringing people with you, stacking the deck in your favor. Number six, target who you wanna talk to. If you have the opportunity in advance to know who's showing up, you can create a target list of people that you wanna get in front of. Who should I connect with? People that would be not only high value for you to speak to, but you know that you can drive a ton of value for them. When you are attending an event and you are on the lookout for the types of people that you know you wanna have a connection with, it makes the networking so much more valuable. And then when you come out of it, you have made deeper and richer connections with people who actually matter to you. So do a little recon in advance, and then think about either the organizers or people who are really well connected who are gonna be there and ask them who they think you should connect with. Number seven, never underestimate who you're speaking to. I have literally walked into events and met with people where I don't know their background, I don't know who they know. And so, you know, you can play it a few ways. You can 
be interested and give them attention and care what they have to say and spend time with them. And then later you're like, oh geez, I didn't realize that you were the uh, senior executive of this company or that your husband was that person, whatever it might be. We judge people so much. And so when you're networking, you never know who the person really is, who they really know, or where they will be in their future. Ask them for the coffee, ask them for the follow-up. I would really love to find out more about this and this and this. But what you can't do is you can't come into a conversation by judging that they're not good enough for you or using them as a backup waiting for someone better to come along. And that takes us to the next point, follow up with everyone all the time. If you made that connection with someone and you genuinely like them, ask them for lunch, ask them for a coffee, send them that email. You have to stay in front of people, whether you're at the networking event or you're at the next event, stay in front of people, stay connected with people and follow up. And last but not least, cross pollinate. What the heck does that mean, right? Well. If you are active in one community or networking group and you know people from another community or networking group, bring those people and cross them. I'm gonna take some people from group two and invite them to group one. I'm connected in all these different groups. I'm gonna start inviting people and being the actual connector. Earlier in the tips, I was talking about finding that person who's, a, who's an influencer or a connector and asking them for connections. You can be that person too because then you have the opportunity to help all of these people out. And so be the connector. Connect the people from each group, each ecosystem, bring them together, invite them out, and form those deeper relationships. If people say that networking doesn't work, it's because they're not doing it right. So take these tips, implement them right away, play the game, have fun, and go out there and crush your sales goals. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.